Hi guys, my name is Amit Kumar and welcome to Webworld Tech. In today's video, we are going to talk about INP. So basically, INP stands for Interaction to Next Paint. Uh, it is one of the vital uh, which is introduced by uh, like Google recently and uh, it is actually one of the very important vital I feel uh, because it helps you to understand the pain points which user has when he's trying to interact with your system. So in a nutshell, if you want to understand, uh, if I have to summarize it, um, just think of it as a latency which is created when um, on the user interaction. For example, user is just clicking on a button or <coughs> trying to scroll through a page. Then what kind of uh, experience you are giving? What kind of uh, lag you are giving? Is it late uh, latency because of your JavaScript execution? Time is more or is it because uh, the event which user is doing it's tied up to api which is taking more time there are a lot of scenarios on on that area so we will look into this uh, slightly in detail in the subsequent slides to start with the first part as you can see is like uh, the range of a good inp is uh, 200 milliseconds from 200 to 500 milliseconds it needs improvement 500 and above it's actually poor and uh, with this i would say like uh, check your websites uh, um, and uh, understand where do you land for every interaction on your current page and you'll get to know which situation you are in currently uh, in order to test it you can use page speed insights web page test any any other online tool which actually helps us in guiding uh, and understanding our core web vitals very uh, in a very detailed manner okay so uh, coming to the definition part as i explained earlier INP observes the latency of all the interactions that user has made with the page and reports a single value with uh, with all these interactions. Now, see, uh, on a page, basically you have four or five items, uh, or not four or five, actually it can be n number of items, where user will interact and n, uh, n number of type of interactions also. Now, which one is behaving in what manner, that is important for us to uh, like understand and what kind of experience we are giving on different type of devices, different network uh, on which these um, websites are operating on, which means like uh, your uh, users are in tier two cities or in what kind of uh, um, uh, networks and all. So this is what we have been talking about. If you say uh, the user is clicking on something, uh, event listener attached to it gets executed. It has its own processing time. Uh, the main thread is working on it and Finally, after doing the computation, it can be a JavaScript computation, uh, uh, calling an API, tying up the data, sending it, sending it back. So, and then presenting the next frame. So, if you talk about any e-commerce site, there has there is a there are different steps uh, to complete the transaction or purchase. I would say uh, for any product or any service. So, it goes through page by page either it can be single page application or multi page application whatsoever but it goes through page by page so there what's the next frame which you are giving to the user and how much time it is taking to present that uh, or your how much time you are taking to respond to the user interaction that is something which we have to look into now it's very important for us to understand like how will i categorize this um, inp so there's no specific guidelines, I would say, that uh, which tells us that how we are going to categorize it. But uh, in my understanding and experience, uh, which I have solved uh, for multiple sites uh, recently, I feel it can be categorized in two aspects. One is front end and uh, front end part, which is your JavaScript uh, execution time, and your uh, back end part. The events. Many times we have like on an interaction, we don't store all the data in the client side lot of data is at the back end and uh, i have seen both the type of applications which are completely stateless stateless on the client and it takes the data from its microservice on demand based on the user interaction so these also this inp scores somehow depends on uh, that what time you is your api taking uh, to respond back and execute the next set of javascript in the uh, pipeline so that it is able to create the uh, response and uh, create a new frame for the user what he has asked for so this two api categorizations can be uh, two um, not api i would say uh, categorizations for imp can be done front end and api
Now, uh, in order to break it down, we need to understand that uh, the first part, you, if you have to solve it actually, that how, uh, how to identify INP, that is the first part. Second one here is impact areas, which is created by INP on the system. Definitely, as I explained, on the back end um, or uh, the front end, both the sides, it's there. You need to always keep in mind it's a main thread which is exa getting exhausted on all the uh, effort or on the um, all the events which user is doing on your site. So what is the, how much time this main thread is going to uh, take to like uh, to get free and create a new frame uh, uh, as a response to the user interaction? That is something. Basically, you can just in one line you can say. Uh, uh, how to reduce the latency of a uh, of uh, main frame uh, sorry main thread execution time something like that but yeah i think this is not a good uh, uh, definition the earlier one which we explained and which we saw uh, on the earlier slides that is a better one so use that one okay the third one is here is the final outcome and on the business impact there can be a question uh, that what is the outcome of uh, doing this basically yes uh, and is there any business impact yes it is there um i recently we uh, we would have seen that uh redbus being a big brand uh in the travel industry they have solved this uh for their booking application on uh, browser world and they have gained good set of improvement in the uh, your uh, transactions that is conversion uh rates for the how many users are coming and how many so you their a user experience got better because the time the users were clicking on and the time uh they were giving the new page uh for the user to travel further deeper in the booking funnel so there uh they have improved it by solving the inp numbers and actually they have seen an improvement on that those numbers are op open in public on their medium blogs and redbus has published at two three places uh, so it, it's available in the uh, internet. You can, we can see on that. Then the fourth one, considering the same thing, like, uh, exact cases, uh, some of the cases I would like to talk about, which they have published on their article. The next one here is, uh, how to identify INP, as we said, four steps, first step. So first to identify an INP, I would say there are two approaches. One, I have not described here uh, directly. One, you can use it with a JavaScript library. It's not a, uh, what to say, a professional, uh, uh, it is a professional approach, but it's for trial uh, version, not suggested for a production mode. So this one, the other, uh, the other approach is like to use this library altogether, uh, the Web Vitals library, and that gives you the complete information about all the vitals, the include which includes your own CLS, on FID, on LCP, on INP, everything. And either you can do a console log for testing time while development, or you can actually uh, throw it uh, to your backend, save it in your logs for further analysis and understanding that. <coughs> excuse me, how to solve it, and uh, what are the major pain areas where uh, and major contributors are of of INP on that particular page. So uh, this particular library can be used uh, with Webpack. You can create a bundle out of it and actually club it with your uh, different pages and use it further. Now impact areas created as we discussed about uh, this um, this thing. So as I said, like the first part here is the front end. Basically intention is to make your main thread as free as possible and uh, make the interaction should be very smooth and very uh, like uh, less time taking. So you click on something, you got an instant uh, reply or actually the it, it is it didn't block the user, it didn't block the main thread. It actually came came up with new frame was created. So you saw uh, a loader, your API responded. It's a non-blocking uh, setup altogether. So something like that. So uh, in order to do that, definitely you're, you need to, we need to work upon your uh, um, freeing up the main thread, unused code and a lot of other stuffs are there. Uh, the other part of it is the backend uh, where I, as we explained earlier also that uh, make our APIs lighter in, uh, which is tied up to all the user interactions first and try to have the APIs with certain uh, timeouts. For example, if I talk about um, a standard 
API, it should be around 200 milliseconds or uh, 300 milliseconds to respond upon. But again, tied up to different networks. It should not be that uh, it is responding uh, with uh, double the time in the 3G network, fast 3G I'm talking about. So basically, we need to be very uh, smart on that side that these interaction-based uh, API endpoints, which is needed uh, for the user to go further in the, uh, what to say, in your uh, booking experience or whatever, so there it should be uh, like, it should be fast enough to give that um, quick response. And the third one is like, in order connecting to the same second point, here is like to reduce the API response time and the transfer data overall through the API. Again, uh, connects to the same thing. Your overall, your latency should be reduced. This is the Red Bus, uh, one of the sample use case, which is also displayed on their uh, uh, portal. This is something which says that on their search page, uh, what happens is like when users are changing the date, they selected some date on homepage, but they, they saw that their uh, choice inventory is not available, uh, buses are not available, they change the date. As soon as they are changing the date, that is firing a call in their backend uh, and getting the new set of inventories for uh, buses for the next date. That is showing INP. Now that is clearly saying that it, it is it, it is in the area of needs improvement. That means their API and the response time which is there, it's high, slightly and which network and all that description is not there, but still they have given good enough data for us to understand that how to uh, work upon it and how can you utilize where and all INP can be used, where and all INP can be triggered. The next use case uh, here is about, again, the same search result page. When the user was actually trying to interact and search for the different bus buses and it was kind of you know pagination. So based on this, uh, what I understand is like they have a pagination not only tied up to the front end, they are uh, paginating at, at back end because of multiple reasons. Uh, and uh, this, this looks good in, in terms of experience. But yes, again, this one also was having a, um, in, in that section of somewhere around 300 milliseconds, I would say 270, 300 like that. So it needs improvement. Uh, again, I'm not going into the detail of how they solved it, but yes, you can see in the, this slide that they have solved it. They got into a good score. It was somewhere within 100, 120, and it became into good area. How they solved it, they have also described about that in that article. Uh, it is very interesting to go through. Um, I think uh, the title of it is how Redbus improved their sales by working on INP, something like that. So you can search it on Google and I'll give you the link in the description for that Medium blog also. Uh, you can understand that their optimization, it's quite interesting and for and few more use cases has been shared. So guys, overall, this is a very interesting topic to explore on in the browser world because if you really want to understand your user's problem, you should understand the pain points like uh, this, this, this uh, vital will guide you in that direction. It is not going to give you a solution for it, but it will guide you in that direction. Now we need to understand how to solve it. That is the subsequent part. If you want to understand that how Redbus solved it and how not only Redbus at a global level, how we should work upon it uh, with the problems, please comment out on the video. I'll try to have some uh, on the next uh, session on the same so that we can actually discuss about the few of the important points which can reduce your INP. Hope you liked the video. Thank you.